everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Week in Review. Just a quick video that we talk about all the videos we did over the past week. Tell you quick thoughts on them. And then you'll say, but I want to know more. Well, happily, we put links to each of the videos in the description of this particular video. I think I said video a lot there. Either way, let's get started. Hey, hey, everybody. I'm Z Garcia, and here's what I reviewed last week. So I reviewed Katara, which I rate a 6 out of 10. This is a very abstracted area control game with some conflict, but it's deterministic conflict, okay? Uh, it's supposed to have a, an Afro-fantasy theme, which is barely there, really. The game feels, it's gameplay. The, the mechanisms are interesting. It's got these cards that you draft, and they dictate just about everything. How many units you get, how much you move, uh, the victory points you are going to score... But the game feels in many ways clinical. It is, it's cold. It's a cold game. It's one, it's a calculating game. It's one that, where everything is so cut and dry that it's more about flexing your brain than it is about engaging the enemy or controlling the land. Uh, that's, that's how it feels. I reviewed Medici the card game. I'm sorry, the dice game. Medici the dice game which I also rate a 6 out of 10, by the way, is a roll-and-write version of Medici. It's, that's, that's, that's it. There are very few surprises here. If you like Medici, you want the roll-and-write version of that, so no bidding, just rolling dice and drafting them and loading that onto your ships. This is what that is. It is about 25 minutes, so it's short. It is possibly familiar to you if you know Medici, but it also lacks any surprises, has no highs or lows. It's pleasant. It's a, it's a perfectly pleasant, but also perfectly forgettable way to spend 25, 30 minutes. So, it's fine. I reviewed uh, Yakatan Buni, which I think is how you say that. And this one I, get, I gave a 7 out of 10 to. It's a two-player card game, which combines this sort of tug-of-war idea that many games have. Lost Cities and Battle Line, that sort of thing. But it combines that with then pattern building as well. You are going to be playing fireworks on your side of the river, uh, affecting the patterns, uh, putting out different configurations of cards, getting points that way from lines and crosses and whatever you're building. But then also checking if you are pulling on the boat in between you and your opponent more than they are and scoring that. It's quirky, it's different, it's got some beautiful cards, uh, minimalistic artwork. And I enjoy it. I think it's uh, it's just outside the box enough to be worth pursuing. It's also not so clever and so distinct that there, you know, that it erases the fact that there have been, you know, dozens of these tug of war style two player games. So there you go. Lastly, I reviewed the Few and Cursed, which is a uh, sort of a deck building exploration game. I rate this a seven point five out of ten. It has. A uh, very rough rule book, uh, and I was I was told in the comments I was being too kind. So the rule book is not good. But and there's a lot of sort of uh, you know, the game shows the seams on this game show. It's sort of cobbled together from a lot of other games. It's a little bit of a Frankenstein, but it's fun. It's a fun Frankenstein. It's a Frankenstein that dances. It's a Frankenstein that tells you a cool story and hangs out with you and goes out to a a bar for a drink, and everybody has a good time. That's how this game feels to me. So I enjoyed it. I, um, you know, not everything is about necessarily polish. Not everything is about innovation. Sometimes these kinds of games can just be cool and have a neat setting with cowboys and demons, you know, and you have a good time with that. And so that's how I felt about it. And that's it for me. Uh, my name is Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one. Yo, my peoples, what's up? My name is Jason and I'm coming at you from the my favorite duck pond in West Hartford, Connecticut. I reviewed two games at the Dice Tower this week. The first one was Zogan. Zogan I gave a 3 out of 10 unfortunately. Uh, this is a derivation of Spit, a uh, fast card playing system uh, from Oink Games in the Oink uh, line of little box games. Uh, I didn't think it added that much and it was a lot more expensive than a deck of playing cards to tell you that. I was much happier with the other game that I reviewed this week, Adventure Tactics, Domian's Tower, a cooperative um, boss battler, uh, tactical uh, fighting game. Uh, Tom and his two daughters reviewed it. 
uh, and you know, confirmed that it was good for kids. But my perspective was it's, it has something to offer to adults as well, especially the leveling system and a streamlined system of card play. So that was uh, my two reviews. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Take care. Hello everyone, this is Graham Anderson and this week I looked at two games. The first game is Athenium Mystic Library about reshelving magical books. This is a fun, quick card drafting game where each card you play will give yourself a benefit and will give a benefit to the player on your left and the player on your right. I really like that you can only score when you have a wand and love the puzzly aspect of this game and gave it a 7.5 out of 10 with the Dice Tower seal of approval. The other game I reviewed was Borgata. This is a mafia based deck builder game. Each player takes on the role of the head of a family trying to become the boss of New York City in the 1970s. The biggest issue I had with this one is the game is fine, but the fact that all the cards are just basic strength card makes this game feel like an inferior deck builder, coupled with the fact that the turns just took too long. And I gave this one a 5.5 out of 10. And that's it for this week. Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delisio, and this week I only reviewed one game. I reviewed Cthulhu Wars Duel with Roy. This is the two player only version of Cthulhu Wars. I rated this an eight. I really like the core system of Cthulhu Wars and this keeps that central feeling of the game that you're looking for with a few little tweaks to make it work for a two player game. I'm always gonna prefer it, prefer it in the big four or more player version, but for a two player game, this does a really good job. That's it for me this week. Let's keep it going. This week I did a bunch of short videos. To, I mean, I did a bunch of short reviews in one video. So several of these are gonna show up in that. For example, Fruity Cola, which with, had really bad usability problems to the point where it's almost unplayable. And then the game on top of that, fairly mediocre. Rock Me Archimedes, this is a game with a tilt board that barely tilts. I don't know what the point of it is. Storytellers, I wanted to like this game. It's a storytelling game for kids. But ah, the, all the characters are animals, and not cute animals running around with suits, but like an actual elephant. So it's hard to imagine that as a knight. The game just didn't work very well. Strike, another one of the short reviews. You roll dice, knock them over, try to score the same thing. Doesn't work for me, but I know a lot of people like it. I took a look at the new Aliens game from Upper Deck. <laughs> it's just kind of boring. And it also has a, a messy rule book that I just didn't enjoy. Europe Divided, also a short review. Uh, it's kind of like a Twilight Struggle, although it's set a little bit more farther in the future than Twilight Struggle, for sure. But I just found it to be slow and a little boring for me. Red Cap Ruckus. This is a game where you push discs onto a board. I like the concept. The discs are good quality, but it's a little samey. The board isn't as sturdy as I'd like it to be, and it just felt okay. Uh, World Shapers. This is a nice little game. It has a possibility for some analysis paralysis in it, but you're drafting cards, placing them in front of you, and scoring in different ways. There's a lot of games that do that. This one offers some in-depth because every card is different. Dinner in Paris, a pretty little game where you're building up little cafes around a square in Paris and then building terraces out. So there's some mean area controlness in there. There's a few small problems with the game, but overall, I found it very enjoyable. Rococo Deluxe, fantastic little game. I really enjoy it, you might say, but it's a seven. It's very pricey and almost overproduced, but it's still a solid game. I like Rococo a lot, but if you have the original version, you only need this one if you want the glorious of all deluxe versions. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, The Beginning, this is a book, Choose Your Own Adventure, uh, mixed with deduction style thing, a pretty solid one. It's not my favorite in this series, but I like all of the games in this series. Little Wood, a reprint of other games like Crazy Chicken and Drive, it's essentially put sets. I don't know if I like it as much as the previous versions, but this card game from Michael Schacht, really solid and recommend it. Paleo was a little review I did in my short ones. Again, Z did the full review of it, but I enjoyed it, and I especially enjoyed how unique it felt compared to other cooperative games. Alter Quest. I took a look at Alter Quest and the box of Kickstarter stretch goals. Alter Quest, there's a lot going on in it. I think it works best as a solo game. I think it's really cool that you can play one dungeon crawl rather than through a campaign. There's a lot of rules, and there's a lot of overhead in the game, but combined at the end of the day, I liked it. Five Minute Mystery, great family style game, mixing deduction and observation with speed and really good components. Escape from the Asylum, I did a little review on this one because I couldn't show much of it, but suffice it to say, it is one of my favorite escape room style games. A lot of cool stuff in there.
And then me and my kids reviewed Taxi Derby. I gave it a seven, but my one of my daughters gave it a 10. You go around, pick up people in a taxi, drop them off. Uh, a lot of neat, fun ideas in this one, and also very good production. We also put up uh, Shoots and Marbles this week. We did live board game breakfast, and other live events went up this week, so I hope you enjoyed them. Keep an eye, because this week we're doing our top 100 games of all time. Anyway, this has been Week in Review. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. <laughs>